fine. Good. Had a good holiday. I haven't talked to you since before Christmas. Mm -hmm. You're still in the NSEX geometry? Yep. Okay. Are you on right triangles? Yes. Okay. What's the Pythagorean theorem say here? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. We've already gotten past that part. Right now, we're on special right triangles, which I already know about. Okay. Cool. I just finished with... Yeah. A uh, geometry student, and that's all we worked on was the 3060 and the 4545. Yep. So, and, and these are super, these I'll, are bet super you, easy. I'll bet you that your material looks a lot like this. Maybe a little harder, although I don't know how you'd make this harder necessarily. Is this what you're working on? Um, wait. Is that's not what we got today. This that's not homework. That's what class we had for classwork. Okay. Do you have some stuff you want to send me? Yep. We got a. I finished that in like five minutes in class and got it all right. I'm sure. I'm sure that you would. Once you get these, you get it. Um, yeah. No. No. It's easier now that I like actually have thought we've gone into more depth about it though. I do need to take a picture. Sorry about okay. that. All right. That's fine. Another the other side. Send one picture at a time. I I made a mistake of sending ten pictures today, and I still have not gotten it. <laughs> it does not like multiple pictures as attachments. Okay. And if you're wondering how I did um, in geometry overall, um, I did end up getting a A. Good. A. good for you, Bolton. Very good. And that's honors geometry. Well, of course yeah. you fell in honors geometry. I'm I'm a little curious as to see how difficult these problems are going to be that you're going to send me, because they're pretty easy, really. Right triangles are pretty easy. I mean, there's nothing really difficult about them as long as you always remember the Pythagorean theorem then you can always figure them out. Or if they're similar to two of those special triangles, then it's all you need to do is figure out the similarity ratio and apply it. So that's about it. So I'm kind of anxious to see what you're sending me here to see how Yansak's going to toughen it up a little bit. I'm sorry that it's taking so long. It's just that... Um... I had a little trouble with my Gmail password earlier today, so I had to um, change it. And Gmail's not, it's not super well. Okay. I'm sending the backside first. I don't know why, because I just clicked on it and I don't want to get rid of it. Okay, that's fine. Oh. Gmail is actually going a little slow today. Yep. The last student that I just had sent me something, and it, I never got it, and she had to resend it. And then I got it. Ah, there it is. All right. I got both of them. Shall I start with the other one? Since you sent the back um, first, yeah, let's start with this. Now, Start with the second one I sent you. Start with the second one I sent you. I'm going to. Here's the problem. 
you did not send it as a file attachment, did you? I sent it as a link. Right, but it, it had the little link. Notice, notice my problem. It came in horizontal, and I have no way of can you download it. I don't think I can. If I could download it, then I could rotate it. But if I click on it, is all I mm -hmm. get is this. Let's see what happens if I open it with Pixar Editor. Maybe I can handle it. Um, never tried this program to handle the... You've done it before. It's better to send it as an attachment instead of as part of the body of the email. You know what I mean? The difference between those? In other words, when you take a picture of it, send that as a file attachment. Then I can download it and rotate it, zoom in, zoom out. Um, I've done this before and you've been able to download it. Yeah, I don't know why I can't this time. It's insisting that I do all of this other stuff which looks like it worked. Uh, how do I rotate this? Um, image, rotate, I want to do 90 degrees. Um, all right, I guess this works. I think this is the same exact page that I had just shown you. Maybe not, no. It didn't have S-H-M-E-C-I-A-L at the top. Um, yeah, it did. It did? Oh, no, it didn't. No, it did. no, no, you're right, it didn't. Well, yeah, no, look, the other one, eight, uh, I can do because I checked, was uh, normal homework. Yeah, let me just write. This is, um, all right, well, let's do yours. Yes. doesn't matter if it's the same or different. No, like, I can guarantee you that it, yeah. Hold on. A lot of this is really easy. Yeah, I know. It is going to be really easy. So let's like two the easy. first one. The first triangle yeah. is... Yeah, equals nine. Um, A equals nine and B equals nine root three. What is that, 18? Yeah. So what is A again? A is 9 and B is 9 times root 3. All right. about number 2? And then C is, of course, 15 and D is 15 times root 2. How about number 3? Okay. So what I have to do to... I already know that 17, that E is 17 root 2. Um, but what I have to do to three. get root F is I can multiply 17 times root 2 times root 2, which will get me 17 times 2, which equals 34. Okay, good. How come he's got an X and an X here? Does that mean those are the same angles? What? In his diagram, Where's F? on number 3, can you see? Um. No. In in number three, question three. Yeah. In other words, can you see my number three here? Yeah. Okay. He's got an X and an X. Does that mean they're equal to one another? That's not an X. What is it? That's a way of just it's ah, a way of showing angles. An angle. Okay. Usually, uh, I'm confused by that. I don't know what you're saying. Usually, normally, normally just, usually, you just do this. Well, sometimes you can also do that. Yeah, you can. It's how he does. The, it was just confusing to me because it looks like an X and an X. Okay, so we know that yeah. 45, 45. So you're right. Side E has to be 17 root 2. And what's F again? 17 root 34 times 
Root 2. Okay, good. How about number 4? Um, okay, so I already know that 11 root 3 is 11 times root 3, so g must be 11. Good. And then multiply g by 2 is 22, so h is 22. Yeah, I can tell today's session is going to go fast. How about number 5? So we are so it's not it doesn't have a root two so we're going to have to divide by root two let me do that real quick yeah and that's, two that's over two. kind of a key in other words if my basic triangle the unit one is one one root two then what's the similarity ratio that's the really the first thing you want to figure out is what's the similarity ratio yeah. So the answer for both is 12 root 2. After rationalizing it. Mm -hmm. Now, um, smartest so for thing, the six, smartest thing I've heard in math in the last six years is what a trig student told me the other day, which is his, is what what? his teacher told him that he did not want him rationalizing these numbers. Leave them with an irrational denominator. Why? Because in trig, you have that a lot, where you have an irrational denominator, and yet you frequently have to take the reciprocal of it. So rationalizing it tends to be a little self-defeating. So when you get to trig, they are perfectly fine with that answer. They don't need you to rationalize it. And I've always been a little bit curious as to why they put so much emphasis on rationalizing numbers. It's the same number. Yeah, that's Yansek. Yansek teaches trig honors, and yet he's a diehard on getting rid of I um, know that. Everybody is. is. This was the first student I've had in six years that told me his teacher was perfectly fine on leaving them irrational. These two numbers are the same. If you put them into a calculator, you'll get exactly the same thing. But so Nantech isn't fine. The only purpose in rationalizing a number is because mathematics has determined that you don't want an irrational denominator. It's just by convention. It does not really have anything to do with mathematics. Um, and, mm -hmm. and in other words, trig is all about ratios. Okay? So if I go up to this triangle that I just circled, and I say, what is the sine of 45? What is it? Do you know? What is what? What's the sine of 45 degrees? We're going to get into trig here a little bit. Opposite over hypotenuse, which is one... No clue what signs are. Well, it's Sokotoa. Remember Sokotoa? No, you probably don't. You probably haven't really had much trig. No, we haven't ever... You don't generally get your first taste of trig until geometry. And it's coming... Yes, I wasn't ever taught us about cosine. It's coming up next. You're going to get trig very, very soon. But... Trig is all about which, ratios. Which is stupid. Which is stupid because kids who took geology last year. What's that? Which is stupid because kids who took it last year learned it at the beginning of the year. Right. Well, I, I've always thought that. Um, which is stupid because kids who took geometry last year learned it at the beginning of the year. Well, they they give you a little bit of trig each year until you finally take the full trig course, and they give you a little bit more each year. So you'll get a little bit more trig this year than you had last year. And then next year, you'll get, you'll, you'll take Algebra 2, and you'll get a little bit more trig. And then the year after that, you'll take pre-calc trig, and that's when you get all of trig. But when you, yeah, I'm not saying that all trig teachers say it's okay to leave an irrational denominator. But this one student I had, I'm not even sure which school he goes to, told me that his teacher said, leave everything with an irrational denominator. And there's a very good reason for that. It's because 
you end up with an irrational denominator so frequently, like the sine of 45 degrees. Well, now if I said, what's the cosecant of 45 degrees? It's the reciprocal. So that becomes square root of 2 over 1. No need for rationalization. Had I rationalized the first one, I would have had a lot more work to do to come up with the cosecant, because the cosecant's the reciprocal of sine. Okay, so there's a very good reason why trig becomes quite a bit easier if you don't have to rationalize these ratios. And so I was really pleasantly surprised to hear this student tell me that his teacher told him not to rationalize these things. That makes a ton of sense in trig. It really does, because notice what happens. If I have to rationalize the sine of 45 degrees, it becomes square root of 2 over 2, right? In other words, instead of 1 over square root of 2, it becomes square root of 2 over 2. Now, if I want to take the reciprocal of that, well, I flip it, which becomes 2 over square root of 2, and now i got to rationalize that. And I get 2 root 2 over 2, so I get square root of 2. In other words, a lot of times by rationalizing the first one, you just make additional work for yourself when you're dealing with the reciprocal. Whereas had I left the first one as 1 over root 2, now the reciprocal of that is one step. I don't need to do any more rationalizing. So having to rationalize all of these fractions when you get to trig, it doesn't really matter whether you get to trig or not. In geometry, there's no need to really rationalize them all. There is nothing, in my opinion, wrong with having an irrational denominator. Your calculator will give you exactly the same number. Okay? I think it all is based on the fact that, in other words, the reason math came up with this in the first place was the fact that division is a process of splitting something apart into multiple things. You can divide by three. You can split something up by thirds. You can divide by five. But how do you divide by square root of five? You can't really split something up into square roots of stuff. And therefore, because of that, they insist that everything have a rational denominator. And that is where the convention came from in the first place. But gosh, in the age of calculators, who cares? Whether, you know, we, we call it 1 over square root of 2 or square root of 2 over 2. They're the same number. And 1 over square root of 2 actually works a little bit better when you're dealing with a lot of trick. All right. Um, where'd we leave off? Number 4? We left off at 6. No, 6, I believe. Okay. How about number 7? Um, again, we left off at 6. We haven't done 6. Oh, okay. Well, we'll do 6 then. What's G? And what's H? Okay. And the first step is always uh -huh. figure out your Wait. similarity ratio. Right? We're not on 4, though. We're doing six. Yeah, no, we're not on four. Ah, sorry. Yes. Number six. This uh, hypotenuse is 24, and they want the side opposite the small angle and the side opposite the big angle. 
So the first step, whenever you're doing these and you're not using the Pythagorean theorem, and you can't really use the Pythagorean theorem here, you have to use your knowledge of this special triangle. To me, the very first step is to always, always solve for the similarity ratio. What's the similarity ratio here? So 24 to the K is 2X to X. So divide 24 by 2 and you get 2. 12. Oh, sorry, 12. There's my yes. unit, 36. And then if you're looking for... So once you figured out that the similarity ratio is 24 divided by 2, well, now everything else is just the similarity ratio times these unit sides. So what's K? K is 12. And what's L? And L is 12 to the root, times root 3. All right. Number 12 times root 3. Number 7. And they orient okay. each of the... So, Differently, we know that just we know to that confuse you. What's the similarity ratio? Um, it's from it's okay. double, right? With m to twelve point twelve times root three. What's the similarity ratio? What do you mean? Well, this. What one, do you mean? The similarity ratio is what's the ratio with my unit triangle? In other words, my unit triangle has a 1 opposite the 30, has a square root of 3 opposite the 60, and it has a 2 for a hypotenuse. So how okay. do I get so the similarity ratio? Similarity ratio is 6. 6 root 3. Similarity ratio is that hypotenuse divided by that hypotenuse. Ah. And now, to get the other two sides, you just multiply the similarity ratio by that number and that number. So, what's M? M is 6 root 3. And what is N? 54. No? Because you multiply 6 root 3 times root 3, and you get... 6 times 9 which equals 54. Ah, you don't get 6 times 9. You get 6 times 3. Oh, what was I thinking? It's all right. Um, Title. Six times Make a mistake equals... every now and then. Hold on. Let's see. What was... You get 18. That was... We need number 8 now. Huh? And... They notice what they're doing here is they're changing the orientation of each of these just to try to confuse you, make it a little harder. Well, the only thing that matters is the side opposite the 30. They can change the orientation all they want, but doesn't really matter. The side opposite the 60 is Q, and the hypotenuse is P. It's the similarity ratio. Give me a second. I'm doing some math here. Um, okay. The similarity ratio is... It would have to be 3, right? No, it would have to be... Yeah, three. No, it's this side divided by its same three, side. Three root five. Three root five. Three root five. Okay, now what is Q? Uh, Q is three root 15. Okay, and what is because, E? Because you multiply three root five times root three, and you get three times root 15. Correct. Now what is P? 6 um, times root 5. Yeah. In other words, coming up with that similarity ratio is huge. 
once you come up with the similarity ratio, then everything else is just a piece of cake. All right. Um, number nine is a 45-45. And what's the first step? Similarity ratio is five times root six. Good. What side R? Of five times root six. And what side S? Um, ten times root three. Because I I did a little simplifying. Yep, I know. I see, I see how you got it. Yeah. I see how you got it. Yeah. Um, good. Okay. And number 10. So the similarity ratio is 45 times root 2, right? Correct, because that would normally be 1. So S and then, is 45 root 2, which makes uh, U, T equal U, to what? What? What's T equal to? Oh, so, okay. T is 45 times root 2. And what is U? U is equal to 45 times root 2 times root 2, which equals 45 times 2, which equals 90. Good. Is that all we had? I, I, I can't seem to read lower than number 10 on this. Oh, I see. I took a really bad picture. Well, that's okay. um, no. Can you describe uh, it to me? Oh, no. How about we go to the back side? Oh. Okay. Because I think I took a better picture. Okay. And then we'll, and then I'll do that, the rest of that on my own time. Uh, that's fine. I think you know how to do all of these, actually, pretty easily. Mm -hmm. um, oh, no, no. It's, just, it's not we couldn't see them. It's just you didn't see if you could scroll down. And they were all just a second here. Let me see the second. So you had you had it correct. Yeah. I took a fine picture. It just, you didn't scroll down to it. Yes, you did. Okay. So um, I'm gonna try to open this page anyway. Uh, part of it is using this pixel editor. Uh, I'm not used to using it, so I don't know how to use it really well. It uh, takes a while to load even. Um, really is much easier if you send these files as attachments rather than as part of the... Notice how long it takes for my computer to pull it up. And then I still have to rotate it. Uh, and I got to rotate it counterclockwise by 90 degrees. Uh, I did it reverse. Uh, image rotate by 180. All right. doesn't give me a whole lot of, uh, let's see, can I zoom? How do I zoom on this pixel editor? I'm not sure. Um, just a second. Let me figure this thing out before I do much else. Image. Wow, I don't see a quick zoom. Image size. Wow. This is really a, a bad editor. Not a bad editor, but an editor that doesn't work real easily. But I think I can... <laughs> I can't even move it to the left without it resizing. That's amazing. Yeah, this, this, is, uh, this is bad pizza here. All right. Let's look at this first one. Looks like these are all special triangles, I'm presuming. Yes. 
So what's that number? 16 root 2? Yep, which means that Z and A must both be 16. All right. Number 14. The hypotenuse is 22, meaning that B must be 11, and uh, C must be 11 root 3. Number 15. Yeah, finally we get a little something, a little more interesting. Oh. Okay, so we already have, oh, we already have all. So we have no side, so we have no side lengths on the um, 30, 60, 90 triangle. But what we do have is the side length on the, um, on the 45, 45 triangle. So if I divide um, 60 by root 2, I get 30 times root 2. Um, and 30 times root 2 doubled to get E equals 60 times root 2. And then 30 root 2 times root 3 to get um, D is 30 times root 6. All right. I, I, would, I wouldn't following all of that. First of all, you work with each triangle separately which I believe you did. What's X? X, where is X? Oh, um, X would have to be 30 times root 2. Which makes this 30 root 2 also, and now we have a 30-60. What's the similarity ratio on the 30-60 triangle? Um, the similarity ratio is um, 30 times root 2, right? Okay, yep. Which makes the side opposite the 60 what? Um, the side of, oh, 60 times root 2. Well, it's 30 times root 6. In other words, if my well, similarity ratio is that... Which one were you talking about? Because technically, the whole side could be taken into account. I mean, this distance right here. In other words, I okay. examine yes. each of these triangles separately, completely. In other words, I'm looking at a 45-45 triangle there, and I'm looking at a 30-60 triangle there. So once I've solved the 45-45 triangle, now I'm in position to solve the 30-60 triangle. The similarity ratio on the 30-60 is that. I did not know which 60 you were Okay, so what is what they're calling side D? Okay. Um, D is 30 times root 6. Correct. And what about the hypotenuse? Hypotenuse is 60 root 2. All right. You, you don't have any trouble with any of these. Number 18. Okay. We're not on 18 yet, though. Oh, that's right. That was 50. Just... Sorry. Here, let me move this thing down a little bit. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, wow. Huh. Just a second. Still trying to figure out this image size. Wow. Boy, they make this hard. That's amazing. This is a terrible editor. They won't let you zoom on it. Um, hmm. Let me go back here. Let me leave this thing and see if I can figure out a way to look at this thing a little better. Um, first of all, let me ask you, do you know how to send this as a file attachment? I did. I clicked the link button. That, that's all I know. Well, this is different than the way you've sent them in the past. Because in the past, I was able to download the file. I sent them the exact you have, same way. You have to send them as an attachment. Not as yes, I did. the body of the t email. And I sent them. I sent them in every. I sent them in the same way I sent every other thing. Hmm. You have an iPhone. It says recent attachments. No, I do not. 
Oh, good. It says One of my few students that doesn't have an iPhone. I don't either. So I, I know you have a Samsung? Yes. If you go to the Samsung and go to the gallery and pull up the picture and then share and put in my email, it will send it as an attachment. Okay, but I will have to retake the picture again. No, it should be in your gallery. They're not, I, no, I don't, they're not linked together. No? You don't have a gallery? Every time you take a picture, it doesn't go into your gallery? I was using my iPad. Oh, well, well you're using an iPhone then. Okay, and I'm not expert on... No, I was using my iPad. Well, iPad's going to be the same operating system as your iPhones. So, I don't know how to do it on an iPhone system. I know how to do it on the Samsung system. And there's something special you have to do with an iPhone system in order to do this. And I have a number of students that don't know how to do it. And once I had a parent describe to the student what they had to do. But without having an iPhone on my end, I can't recall exactly what you're supposed to do. But you have to figure out how to send it as a large image attachment. Not a small image, but a large image. Does that ring any bells? Again, I've been sent, I'm sending it to you exactly how I've sent every other photo. Yeah doesn't matter. I'm not able to do anything with this without this ridiculous editor that it offers me. In other words, if you can figure out a different way to send it, let's figure it out now. So that you can send it that way in the future. There is literally no way to, other way to send it. There's one link button. That's it. Really? And it's a bunch of topics that, that I can't do anything. Can't add anything else. All right. That's all I can do. No. So I did what I did. What happens if I right click on that? Doesn't do any good. And if I there, can you go back to your Gmail screen where it has shows the Yeah. Do you wait? Click on it on the um Notice that it does not give me go up, go up. Ah, there it is. I apologize completely. There was a download button. I just didn't know what it was. Now, once I've got it in this, I can deal with it. In other words, I can rotate. I can zoom. I can do all kinds of things here. And this, in other words, I can handle a JPG file. And zooming is a piece of cake. Whereas that pixel editor that I was trying to use didn't work worth a crap. All right. That was my mistake. I didn't realize I could zoom on it. So 13 is what? We're not on 13. What are we on? Or if anything, I'm I'm on 18. All right. Well, that's right. Yeah. I don't think we did 13 and 14, but that's okay. You don't need practice. No, we do. You don't need practice. We did do them. You know how to do these awfully well. So, what's K on 18? Um, 12 times root 3. What's J? 12. Okay. And 19. Um. Uh, here we're dealing with two 45-45 triangles. So you just kind of have to start with the dimension they give you. And what's this top? Can you see where I'm pointing? Um, yeah, what's that top that? is 12. And what's the hypotenuse of that triangle? 12 root 2. Okay, so now we have, now I can draw the other triangle easy enough. It's also 45, 45. This is 12 root 2. There's the right angle. What's this side over here? L? Which side? Oh, um, 
12 times root 2. And what is m? 24. And number 20. All right, they're starting to mix them up a little bit. So we have the perimeter is 52 degrees. Okay. So since we know it's uh, it's regular, it's a square, um, we also know that each side has to be uh, similar. We, we all know that each side is equal. So divide 52 by 4, and you get, you get 13, right? Correct. So N is 13. Now what is P? So um, P must now be 13 times root 2. Correct. 21. Okay. So I'm just a yes, I can assume. No, um, 21's a little harder. 21 requires that you know properties of a 30-60 right triangle. And well, I mean, well, it's a little harder we, than it looks. It's a little harder than it looks. Because what happens when I draw a perpendicular to that? What kind of triangle do I create? In other words, what's triangle one? What are its dimensions? Or what are its angles? What, it's 60, it's 30, 60, 90. Yeah, also. It's, in other words, that happens when you take a 30, 60, 90 triangle and you draw a perpendicular from the vertex. We call that an altitude you end up getting a 30-60 triangle. Yeah. In fact, both of all three of the triangles you're looking at there are all 30-60 triangles. Yeah. This one is, that one is, and the big one is. So always know that when you start with a 30-60 triangle and you draw an altitude, you end up with three 30-60 triangles. And so you can figure out everything. If that side's 14, what's Q? Q equals 7. And what's R? 21. Well, R is actually 14, right? No. Because you have to do 7 root well, 3 times... R, R plus Q. R plus Q would be twice 14. Hold on. What the heck's going on? No. What you have to... First, no, what you have to do... Is this right? Do yeah, that one's right. Okay, now we have another 30-60 triangle... And we know this side here is what? Um, 7 times root 3. Which side? Oh. That is 7 root 3. So now what and then is you have to R? Do that. So, seven, so R is 7 times 7 root 3 times root 3. So therefore you get 7 times 3 equals 21. All right. You're right. That is the distance from there to there. Okay. Let's do 22. So that's, this is super easy. S is 25 and um, T is 25 root 3. Right. 23. Okay, what I'd first like to do is, if possible, reduce 5 times root 32. Because okay, you don't have to do it, and it actually is going to be self-defeating. Notice what happens if you don't reduce it. What is u? U is five times root thirty-two. Now what is v? 
Well, again, it, it'd be harder to multiply a bigger number. Not really. Notice what happens. When you have a 45, 45, you have 1, 1 root 2. Okay, so our similarity ratio is 5 root 32. We're going to multiply it by root 2, which gives us 5 root 64, which is 5 times 8. That's what V is, is 40. And notice that I was better off not simplifying it first. Because I ended up with perfect square, root 64. Had I simplified it, which I certainly could have done, I could have made root 32 be 2 times root 8. But it actually would have made the math a little harder. Eh, maybe not harder, but... Sometimes you don't need to simplify these, and you get to the end, and you have two answers. Now, now maybe Yansak wants you to simplify u. u would be 10 root 8. Again, it doesn't, I, he does want us to simplify u. All right, that's fine. So I got 20 times root 2. Right, okay. Uh, 10 times root 2. No, 10 times root, oh. You're right, 20 times root 2. Yeah, yeah. But notice the um, moment I make u 20 times root 2, it actually makes solving for v a little harder. Well, it doesn't make it harder. It just gives more steps. Well, you're right. You're right. To me, that's harder. Well, actually, I don't really think it does because um, you you get 20 times root 2 times root 2, um, Meaning it's a square, meaning right. we can just... Yeah, you're um, right. You're right. You're absolutely right. 24. Okay, so we know 10, which is the long... So what we do, I'm going to start off by dividing 10 by root 3. That's the similarity ratio. And I don't worry about rationalizing that until you get done. Once you've solved for X and W, if those need rationalizing, fine. Ooh. But there's no need to rationalize the similarity ratio. That's not a final answer for anything. What's W going to be? It's going to be 10 times root 3 over 3. Right. So in other Not words, simplify. W does need to be rationalized. Can you? Uh-huh. So that's what W is. X. What is X two be? times that. So, so that would be. Two times the similar. Wouldn't that be 20 times? Yeah. yeah 20, wouldn't that be. 20 root 3 over 3. Yeah. You just take twice that. So in this particular problem, it actually did make sense to rationalize our similarity ratio because both W and X needed to be rationalized. So rationalizing at first makes a lot of sense. What you're going to find is when you get to trigonometry, rationalizing at first often is counterproductive. In other words, you're going to have to re-rationalize it again when you take its reciprocal. So what are all, what are all of these Greek letters? Angles. Typically, angles are described by Greek letters, and small letters describe sides. Okay? Ah, now, of course, right after I say that, they give you all these Greek letters to describe sides. Uh, typically, what I said is true. Greek letters are used to describe angles, and alphanumeric letters are used to describe sides. 25 is not like that. 25, the Greek letters, are describing the sides. Which is really odd. Well, let's have a look at this, as to why they did this this way. This was actually really... Uh, one, two, three, four. What's each of these angles down here? 
Okay, they're each 45, and every single angle, angle except for the ones already labeled are 45. Which makes all four of these isosceles right triangles. Yes, or 45, 45. And they gave us dimensions on only the one on the far right. So what's alpha? Um, alpha is root 2. What's beta? Um, give me a second. Beta is 2. What's I don't even know the Greek yeah. letter pronunciation for you. What's what's you? Um, you would have to be two times root two. What was beta? And omega. What was what? beta? Um, be beta was two. Okay, so. And then omega, which is I assume is the last one, is four. Yeah. I think we're done. Uh, we are. Okay. Logan doing his session today? What? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Bolton, I will talk to you next Tuesday. Okay. You too. All right. Bye-bye.